and Ijara town have access to, re to reliable electricity? Number two, does the government have plans to compensate affected businesses in Masalani town and Ijara town following massive losses of produce, of produce incurred, especially by vendors who sell perishable commodities? Number three, what plan is the government putting in place to install a power station in Masalani Ward and Ijara to provide stable and reliable power connectivity in Masalani and Ijara Wards, given the current and reliable connectivity is from Hola Town, Tana River County? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Next order. As we wait for the next order, let me take this opportunity to recognize the presence of the Ogbavuni Secondary School from Bahati constituency in Nakuru, who are seated in the public gallery. And on my own behalf and that of the entire National Assembly, we welcome the students to the National Assembly. Thank you. Next order. Order number eight, procedural motion. Reduction of application period of a specified bill. What's your point of order, Honorable Lungi? Mm. Madam uh, Speaker, yesterday the chair of uh, internal security gave uh, responses to statements, but you did not give us uh, time to react to the statements. So I wanted to be given the opportunity. Because I think uh, there was no one to respond to it. And I don't know if the chairperson is here now. He has just walked back to the back just, office. Okay. But you just raise what you wanted to raise, proceed on it. I, yeah, I remember I said I'll be with you. Yeah, Madam Speaker, the chair, Honorable Togos, gave a response to my statement on uh, the circumstances that led to the death of uh, Benjamin Mwaneki Kadengu. And uh, Madam Speaker, I was not satisfied with the response because of the following reasons. Number one, part two of my question was not answered. Number two, the suicide theory that was um, uh, cooked is not acceptable. Number three, the investigations has, has taken six months from the date of the death and uh, the I.O. says they are investigating and analyzing reports and they are waiting for results from chemi uh, government chemists uh, for six months. No arrests have been made. Family is not uh, briefed and um, updated on the matter. I'm told the high hall is very hostile to the family. And therefore, Madam Speaker, I request for the following. Number one, there should be a family meeting for briefing between the county commissioner and the DCI. Number two, we request for independent investigations from DCI and the quarters, not the local DCI from OLA. And therefore, Madam Speaker, I request the chair to take up that matter. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. As I see that the chair had worked out, I think I'll ask the, the leader of majority to be able, or the, you're a member of the committee? What's point. your point of order? Uh, Madam Speaker, thank you very much. My point of order is that I've just raised a statement which is very sensitive in terms of the Kenyan power, and I really wanted a commitment in terms of the number of days or number of weeks from the chairperson of the Committee of Energy or any member of that committee. Second, my other point of order is, uh, Madam Speaker, I want to concur and follow what uh, my colleague have said. Yesterday, we got a report from the chairperson for internal security on my statement I raised some one month ago on the missing of, of, uh, of Haret Khalif and, uh, um, and Abdurrahman 
on, uh, on abduction. The statement that the chair of committee for internal security raised, it was too general. I just request your guidance on that matter because the families of the two people missing in the Jara constituency, they request either their people to be given when they are alive or when they are even al not alive. So I request uh, at least uh, proper investigation, including multi-sectoral, uh, multi-agency teams. To be, to be put in place so that we can get the feedback for the families that are affected. Thank you very much. Thank you. As uh, the chairperson of internal security is not here, but I, will, I think uh, majority leader will ensure uh, through the whip that uh, that matter is raised, is uh, taken to that committee, and also the handsled records of what the members have raised, so that we, sh we will, at the next sitting, when he's present, we shall ask for a commitment from the chairperson of internal security. Thank you. What's your point of order, Honorable Farah? Okay. Madam Speaker, I, I wish to add my voice to what the Honorable Member for Ijara has said. One of the, the biggest landmark, earth-shaking commitment we got from this government and our President William Ruto was that there's not going to be any more enforced disappearances, which was the hallmark of the previous government. Can we have, can we have the government, through, of course, the, the chair and everybody here, there are about the many people who are missing now, who have just been plugged out of the midst of their own homes, and we don't know where they are. We have no problem with the investigations. They could be criminals, they could not be criminals. But the reality of the matter is that we want them to be taken to court, the courts are very lenient. If you need more time for investigation, they'll give you two weeks, one month, even two months they can give you. And then we can know that our relatives, our family members are actually safe. Madam Speaker, there are in excess of five people right now in Gariza alone that cannot be accounted, accounted for in the last couple of months. And the families are pestering us on a daily basis and telling us where are our family members. So that, that is the seriousness with which we want the government, as well as the parliament and the committee, the relevant committees, to take this matter. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's proceed with the order. Um, you, there's a procedural motion. By the Chairperson Appropriations Committee. Thank you very much. Back to order number eight. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I wish to move that uh, pursuant to the provisions of Standing Order 120, that this House resolves to reduce the publication period of the Supplementary Appropriation Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 32 of 2024, from seven days to one day, Honorable Speaker. The justification for this, Honorable Speaker, is that as members are aware, we are burning midnight oil to complete the processes ahead of us. Yesterday, members left here almost at midnight because we are trying to do justice to our country insofar as processing the supplementary estimates, the budget uh, estimates for 24-25, the Division of Revenue Bill, and all those associated uh, motions, Honorable Speaker. And for that reason, uh, as uh, members are aware, during a period when we have a budget cycle like now, actually what happens is that if this technically does not work, because we could end up affecting changes, which then the IFMIS is also releasing first on the other side. And for that reason, we need the country to operate properly, the Treasury to operate properly, and the more the reason to hasten the conclusion of the supplementary estimates so that IFMIS can start working normally and so that uh, the monies that we are appropriating in the supplementary can come out, and especially also so that we can be able to fast track exchequer releases for critical areas like NGCDF and the others, Honorable Speaker. And I request Honorable uh, Osoro, who is our very able whip, uh, to second this motion. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, as I said yesterday, we have lim a limited time in this uh, session that uh, we'll have sittings only this month and early next month we'll again go for a short recess. And that then means 
that we've got to sacrifice, sacrifice in everything, including condensing what we consider vital so that we can be able to finish everything in time. And that is why this publication of the uh, supplementary uh, appropriation bill should be reduced at least from seven to one day so that again we can be able to dispense of uh, the main budget for this financial year, Honorable Speaker. So for that reason, I beg to second. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. You have seconded? I didn't hear I beg to second. <laughs> it says, proceed, honorable members, I now propose the question that passing on to the provisions of Order 120, this House resolves to reduce the publication period of the Supplementary Appropriations Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 32 of 2024, from seven days to one day. I think I can allow one contribution from Honorable Nikal before. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I think we, the, the process we have is understood that we may have to move things faster, and therefore, to that extent, I, I support the change, the, the fast, fast tracking of this. But, Madam Speaker, there is something we should take as a general principle. I know we are moving very fast, and even to the next item, the budget 2024 will move very fast. But I think it's an important principle that actually members get to know the document. This document has actually just arrived. I know it is exactly the same as the one we discussed yesterday. But you, all, you know that sometimes what you discussed yesterday may not be exactly the same. So I think in future, we need to actually give more time so that members can at least peruse. If something was changed from yesterday, how do we know? So I think that's an important part, but for this, I support. Hmm? Thank you. Honorable members, I now put the question that pass you on to the provisions of Standing Order 120, this House resolves to reduce the publication period of the Supplementary Appropriations Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 32 of 2024, from seven days to one day. Will as many as of that opinion say aye? aye. Will as many as of the contrary opinion say nay? The ayes have it. Order number nine, the Supplementary Appropriation Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 32 of 2024, first reading. A bill for an act of parliament to authorize the issue of certain sums of money out of the consolidated fund and their application towards the service of the year ending on the 30th June 2024 and to appropriate those sums for certain public services and purposes. Order number 10, the supplementary appropriation bill, National Assembly Bill number 32 of 2024, second reading. The mover. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that the supplementary appropriations bill, that is the National Assembly Bill number 32 of 2024, be now read a second time. Honorable Speaker, the bill before us is, as Honorable Nikal has put it, is exactly what we were debating yesterday, Honorable Speaker, and I do not need to belabor the point. The point is that, Honorable Speaker, that we are now having a supplementary tool. Generally speaking, it is for tidying up the government financials and especially giving cognizance to the fact that we are crossing the year in June in a few days' time, and a lot has changed and especially around interest rates, Honorable Speaker, and therefore we had to revise our CFS to reflect the current dynamics in the interest rate market and also in the exchange rate market, Honorable Speaker. And for that reason, we will be moving to the Committee of the Whole House, Honorable Speaker, so that members can get a chance to contribute um, even to the specifics, Honorable Speaker, and therefore I do not wish to belabor the point. 
all the points that we gave yesterday starts that the appropriations that we are doing today is adding Kenya Ceilings 4 billion to fertilizer. It is adding, Honorable Speaker, some uh, money to the security agencies, Honorable Speaker. It into flood uh, mitigation and issues around supporting Kenyans who have been heavily affected by the vagaries of the weather and excessive rains. And Honorable Speaker, we are also de uh, getting this money uh, from what I uh, insinuated there before from especially CFS where we anticipate to pay lower than budgeted in the supplementary one interest rate for our financial obligations both domestically and externally and therefore honorable speaker also it is the same appropriations bill that will be giving authority so that the, bod uh, the bodyguards and drivers for the members of this house also get to get they have fair deal of uh, areas that have been pending from January. As members know, these are members with their own families. They have their lives. Whereas other civil servants are facilitated, the bodyguards and drivers in this house, Honorable Speaker, have not been receiving their deals due to the constraints of, of money, Honorable Speaker. And in appropriating this supplementary to Honorable Speaker, will be giving authority that they get their fair deals that are from January to date, among many other things that I talked about. Honorable Speaker, generally, this was just to put resources into where the Kenyans are, that is farmers, that is why there is fertilizer in the education sector, in the security sector, the core of any administration and government and state, Honorable Speaker. And without further ado, I wish to move and request the Honorable Mary Emase I, I request the Honorable Mary Masse, who is the chairperson of the Budget and Appropriations Committee, to second this motion of the Appropriations Bill for the Supplementary 2. The Vice Chairperson. I second. <laughs> Honorable Members, I now propose the question that the Supplementary Appropriations Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 32 of 2024, be read a second time. <laughs> Minority Leader, you may I'll give you a few minutes. Uh, whereas I agree, Honorable Speaker, that we, may, we need to put the question, uh, I thank you for indulging me so that I can say one or two things. First and foremost, I want to commend the work of the Budget Committee in the last couple of weeks. Chairperson Budget, you're being addressed. I don't know if he's Chair listening to me. Members are, members are hearing. Proceed. Okay. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I wanted to say that uh, I needed to commend the Budget and Appropriations Committee for the good work they've been able to do in the last couple of weeks. I can see my friend uh, Babu Wina is there. <laughs> I don't know who else is here. Members of the committee. Hey, Mashaku, Mashaku himself, the chairman of the CPs. Honorable Tandi is there. Uh, Honorable Ruto Dinga and many other members who have done an exceptional work job in the last couple of weeks trying to deal with very serious issues. Uh, first and foremost was the issue of mediation, then the, on the, on the uh, division of revenue bill, and then they have dealt with the issue of the main estimates for the next financial year, and now they've been able to deal with this issue of supplementary estimates too. Honorable Speaker, as I commend the committee under the able chairmanship of my good friend, the Honorable King, uh, Ndindi Nyoro, let me say one thing. We have got a problem still with money earmarked for political parties. Honorable Speaker, you will recall that in supplementary estimates one, monies that had been budgeted for political parties funding was reduced from 1.4 billion shillings to a mere 600 million shillings. That is a reduction by, of a whooping 800 million shillings. The committee has attempted to remedy the 
anomaly by resetting back some money, a paltry 200 million shillings, the committee of the budget. And I'm, I'm saying this because I'm aware that the parent committee on, of JLAC had not done justice to the political parties' funding in their report to the budget committee. But that is now out under the bridge. Uh, the committee on budget and appropriations has made some positive steps by bringing back some money. But that is not enough, especially bearing in mind that none other than a court of law gave orders that that reduction in supplementary estimate one was unconstitutional, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I don't want to see a situation where by this House continues to be bombarded with court orders on issues which are straightforward, Honorable Speaker. The political party's fund is a fund which is ring fenced under the law. Under the law, Honorable Speaker. If we look at political parties act at uh, section 23, 24, 25, it is clear. The, the political party's fund is 0.3% of the total national revenue, Honorable Speaker. In the same manner, the national government, the whole CDF fund, is ring fenced. The political party's fund is equally ring fenced. Honorable Speaker, I, I want to plead that going forward, first and foremost, we need to ensure that in this, in the new financial year, we, we, and we put in place enough money, we budget for the political party's funding in accordance with the law. But having done so, once we do so, let us, let us resist the temptation to reduce that money in the subsequent supplementary estimates. Because we'll be contrary to the law, Honorable Speaker. Political parties are the foundation of our multi-party democracy. Political parties. Functioning political parties are the basis of our multi-party democracy under the Constitution. And we must work extremely hard and ensure as a House that we are not part of the forces that are being seen as negating the spirit of multi-party democracy, which is enshrined in the Constitution. I hope and pray, I hope and pray as I conclude, that in the, the monies that have not been reinstated for the political parties' funding are going to find their way in the main budget for the financial year 2024-2025. It is incumbent upon all of us to do so. Honorable Speaker, you know, sometimes people can argue. But let me tell you, the day you will kill political parties, and I can see Honorable David Chiang, who is one of the political party leaders, is looking at me. Yes, Honorable Chiang, you agree with me that political parties are critical institutions of governance, and they are institutions that we must, we must strive to strengthen as a house, as a house. I want to... And you know, I am, I am a proud member of the ODM party, Honorable Speaker. Not only a member, but a ranking member of the ODM party. And I am hoping that all of us who belong to various political parties will see the sense in ensuring that we protect those parties. The only way to do so is first by funding them adequately. Let me conclude again as I reiterate Honorable Meli, please allow Honorable Nini to listen to me. Uh, let me conclude by reiterating what I said earlier on. That the Budget and Appropriations Committee is working under very difficult circumstances. Trying to balance budgets under very, 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 very unfavorable fiscal uh, or, or, or environment. And I must commend them for the work that they have been doing. Let us continue to support this committee which is the, what I would call the mother committee, you know, in this house. And with those very many remarks, Honorable Speaker, I want to support the appropriations bill for supplementary estimates too. And I hope and trust that this is going to be the last time we are dealing with what is called supplementary too. 
going forward, let us do only one supplementary budget, if, if need be. Honorable Speaker, thank you, and I support. Thank you, Honorable Members. I now put the question that the Supplementary Appropriations Bill, National Assembly Bill No. 32 of 2024, be read a second time. Will as many as of that opinion say aye? Aye. Will as many of the contrary opinion say nay? The ayes have it. A bill. A point of order. Uh, a bill for an act of parliament to authorize the issue of certain sums of money out of the consolidated fund and the application towards the services of the year ending on the 30th June 2024 and to appropriate those sums for certain public services and purposes. Before we proceed, I can see there's a point of order for the deputy leader. Yes, uh, Honorable Speaker, I want to 